Hello YouTube, TurboDo555 here, and this is the final part of my guide on water cooling. Now this final video is just about the system, it's now complete, and I'm just going to show you what's been going on. Now as you may notice looking at the video, I had to make a few changes from what I was originally planning on doing, because I was going to have all the tubing running on the inside of the case. Discovered I actually don't have enough room. So I had to drill some holes in the back of the case. While not as incredibly neat as I was going to have it, it's still effective and doesn't look too out of place. It's just something I had to do. Obviously, and because I had to do that, also some of the piping had to change. And you can see those little uh, white 90 degree angle uh, plastic bits are not ideal, but as again, had to be taken into account taken into consideration and put there. But I'm still quite happy with how it's turned out. It could have been a lot worse. Also in this video I'm going to show you a little bit about overclocking the uh, i7-2600K. Obviously a little disclaimer I'll have to put in there to say that overclocking could reduce the life of your system etc etc. Only do it if you know what you're doing etc etc. And don't take this guide as a rule, this is just what I did. You may Google and find some other useful guides, but this is what I did. Now, obviously, these settings are exclusive to the motherboard that I have, which is the P67A GD65, the MSI motherboard. And all you need to do with this new processor is change the CPU multiplier. In my case, I have it at 50 or 51. I change the front serial bus to 100.1 megahertz just to make sure it stays above 5.1 and doesn't drop down. You want to change the CPU PLL override to enabled if it's not already. I up the CPU voltage slightly to about 1.5. It's not always at exactly 1.5 but that's where it usually sort of hovers at. I change the CPU VTT also known as the QPI VVT to 1.27. Could do a little bit of undervolt in there, maybe, I don't know, but that's what I have it at the moment. CPU SA, the memory controller, it's at 1.03. CPU PLL at 1.8. The PCH, also known as your South Bridge, is at the default 1.5. The RAM voltage is also at the default for the RAM. I'm not tweaking any of that. Dis disabled turbo. And last but not least, change the max CPU power to 255. Now there's a couple of little videos here about some of the other uh, accessories that I've got for the PC case. This is to go in the tubing or in a reservoir, this is a silver kill coil as it's known and this helps stop things like algae and what have you growing in your tubing in your system. It's a lot more effective than constantly adding chemicals every five minutes. Also, hey look at that, compression fittings, what I was originally trying to get when I started building the system. I got some 90 degree angled ones from SCAN. These are ScanFX's own ones, and this allows me to save a little bit of space and not bend the tubing at the bottom of the case there because it's very compact. In this clip, you can see the modifications I made to the motherboard tray just for the little wires to go through without coming across in front of the case. This is the Blu ray rewriter drive that I got for watching films or burning films of my own onto Blu ray. Okay, first up, here's Crisis running on DX10 with the advanced graphics mod on so that is going to lower my frame rate a little bit more and Fraps was telling me that at most points it was dropping straight down to 25 frames a second like at all times so Fraps does affect your frames per second when it's recording so you can't really get a reliable result from that so what I did later on is I played Crisis in its debug mode which tells you a running commentary of everything that's going on, all these stats, including new frames per second, so I thought that was a better way of getting a more accurate judgement of how my graphics card and my CPU were performing. 
and what I saw anything between 40 and 80 frames per second which is obviously a lot better averaging out about 60 which is about 60 really looking at that like I say but when the action heats up when there's several vehicles and loads of people and explosions going on it's going to drop back down to about 40 which is perfectly fine because 25 frames a second is perfectly playable so anything extra is a bonus so I'm quite happy with that it could probably be a little bit better if I had another graphics card in crossfire which I may do probably won't water cool it so that will strip everything back down again and there's a bit of metro there as well now again with fraps recording the frame rate suffered massively uh, with max settings and everything without fraps on uh, just visualing, visualizing how it was running and then running fraps, uh, running fraps in idle mode where it's just telling you what's going on without recording anything everything's at 60 frames or above so fraps is pretty much pointless in my opinion now I'm gonna say, I have to say it anytime you're recording and benchmarking it just takes a good 20 frames or more off your frames per second so you may as well just have it running in idle telling you what it is or using games debug mode because a lot of games do have a debug mode usually with frames per second showing up so that's the best way to try and find out what your average frames per second are 